Hello guys and welcome to today's install of Navea Computers and Technology where we are finally going to take a look at this Dell Dimension XPS P100C desktop computer that I picked up at a garage sale for 5 bucks. Now I have already done a quick little preview video on this system a couple days ago and I have done a little bit more research since then and I have a little bit more knowledge about this system but there's still probably one or two things I am going to get wrong in this video probably a lot more. Um, so if you come across one of those please just uh, post a comment in the comment section to let me know. I'm going to switch up the video format today because we have already seen what's inside the system and I am really anxious to see if this actually works at all. I have not plugged this in yet. I have not turned it on to see if it actually works. So that's the first thing I want to hit in this little overview. This is one of those overviews where I'm going to have to split it up into two parts just because I want to do a lot of stuff with this system. In this part of the overview, uh, we're going to turn it on, see if it actually works. I'm going to take it apart. We're going to tear down everything. I mean, I'm going to take out everything uh, in this system. System and we'll have a closer look at everything. Then I'm going to throw it all back together and I'm going to try to boot this thing off a live USB flash drive with Linux on it. And then in part two, I'm going to try to get some sort of Windows, either 95, 98, or 2000 installed on a hard drive and working with this PC. So let's go ahead and see if this thing even works. Really excited to turn this on and hopefully nothing goes bang. So everything is plugged in and ready to go at this point except for the system. Going to plug it in on camera to uh, catch if anything catches on fire or anything like that. The audio is going to be a bit weird right now because at times I'm going to be a mile away from the mic so I apologize about that. But we are going to plug this thing in in three. Oh, no, this is kind of scary actually. Not sure how long this has just been sitting there. Two, one. Oh, the case kind of came off right there. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, nothing really happened. Okay, that's good so far. So if I hit the power button, oh, it's coming to life. Oh, wow. All right, oh, can I get into the BIOS? Oh, I'm about to make some cuts here, but it is functioning. Now my preview video, a lot of my viewers were saying that the configuration of the system is not stock. It appears the previous owner has actually gone in here and made a couple upgrades that or he actually changed the faceplate out. Um, but this is the XPS P100C, or supposed to be anyway, and that should have shipped with a Pentium processor running at 100 megahertz. You can see that according to the BIOS, this Pentium processor is running at 133 megahertz. Uh, we also have 256 kilobytes of cache in this system. System. That's in a uh, uh, separate cache module, which I will show you guys in just a minute when I open up this PC. System memory, we're rocking 32 megabytes of 72 pin EDO RAM. So that's four eight megabyte sticks. And I'm trying to see if there's anything else really relevant here. Um, if there is, you guys can read it yourselves. I'll switch pages. There's only two pages in this BIOS and you can just check out what our uh, boot sequence is, see if there's a password enabled. And that's really about it as far as information um, from the BIOS goes. So let's go ahead and take a look around the system and then we're gonna tear this thing down. The overall design of this case is pretty spartan. There's nothing too much to talk about on the outside. Right in the front, you can see a CD-ROM drive and the two original blanking plates. There's a floppy drive right below that. Nice clunky power switch right here. Really loving the way this feels and sound. I hope that's uh, coming out on the mic. There is a power indication light right here. Hard drive access indication light right here. Reset button, our Dell Dimension XPS P100C logo below that. And then all the way at the bottom, we have our Windows 95 sticker. And there used to be a Intel Pentium sticker right there. But unfortunately, that was ripped off would have really loved to still have that on the PC uh, but yeah that was lost a long long time ago if we move over to the left side you can see that there's nothing much here there is a ventilation cutout right here uh, to provide some air to the hard drive bay and besides that as you can see on the bottom there's these little feet to uh, keep it from tipping over and for some reason when I look at the side of this case I just keep thinking of Gateway 2000. I don't know if Gateway 2000 had a side panel like this or something, but the minute I saw this, I, I just thought of Gateway 2000. Does uh, anyone know like why I keep thinking about that? I, I, I have no clue. Maybe uh, it was just a similar case design. I don't want to ramble on about that too much, but if they did have a similar case design to this, please let me know. Uh, other side is pretty much exactly the same, except it doesn't have that ventilation cut out. Uh, nothing too much on the top and bottom of the PCE. You can see the top right here. That's absolutely plain. If we look at the bottom, I actually don't remember if this has all the original feet on it, the rubber feet on it or not. We'll flip that over right now and take a look. There you go, ah, it actually does. It has all four original rubber feet still on the system. And if I take this and flip it so you guys can actually see the back, 
You can see our power supply right here. There's two serial ports, parallel port, PS2 for keyboard and mouse. And then you can see uh, the back planes for all of our adding cards. Let me go ahead and focus up there so you guys can get a better look at all of this. This is the VGA out for our number nine video card. You can see there's a ethernet port right here, phone modem right here, and then right below that, all the way at the bottom is the outputs for that sound blaster card. Removing the case cover is pretty easy, especially on this particular PC because it is missing some of the stuff that's supposed to be holding the case on, like a screw right here and a plastic clip down here. That plastic clip came off, but the previous owner still had it. He gave it to me and maybe I could epoxy this or super glue this back on uh, sometime. But since there's only one holding it in, all I have to do is push that plastic clip back and slide the back of the case off. Little bit tricky. There we go. Uh, yeah, so not too bad. Sometimes the cables get caught on the case, so uh, that makes things a little bit more complicated, but that didn't really happen this time. And if I move it over, you can see all of the goodies inside. Right now, I'm just gonna give everything a quick once over, then we're gonna pull a lot of the stuff out to have a better look at it. I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up like I did last time. Right here, you can see our Sound Blaster AWE32 sound card. I've been told that this is basically just a glorified Sound Blaster 16 card. Right above that is the modem and hidden tucked away here is the ethernet card. That's why I wanna pull a lot of this stuff out because it is kinda of hard to get a good uh, camera angle of it. There's our number nine video card right here with that S3 video processor. You can see on the back it has a nice big number nine logo. Now that's it as far as expansion cards go. If we move over to the left side, my camera's getting tangled up in the case. Uh, I really need to take the strap off. But right here you can see that Pentium processor running at 133 megahertz, not 100 megahertz like I thought last time. There is the system cache module right there, 256 kilobytes of cache on board. And then there is our four sticks of RAM. Towards the top of the case, you can see our Dell 230 watt power supply, if that would get in focus. Right here is the hard drive caddy, so if there's actually a drive in here that would fold over just like this and all these IDE ribbon cables weren't in the way, and then the screw would just go right here to secure everything in. You also have the option of adding a cooling fan if you so desired. Once again, focus is killing me. Right here you can see our CD-ROM drive, or the back of it anyway, and then our floppy drive is right here. Now as you can see I have almost everything out from the PC and right in front of you. The only thing I was not able to remove was that cache module that was just stuck in there and I could not remove it. Didn't want to use too much force because I was afraid I would rip something out that I did not want to. So we're going to start from the top again and work our way down. Right here you can see our Sound Blaster AWE32 sound card. This is the value version meaning it does not have any SIM slots for additional RAM and it doesn't come pre-installed with the ASP. P processor. Now, as you can see, it also does have the slot for that processor, so you could, if you wanted to, go out and buy one and place one in there, uh, but it does not come stock with it. Right below that, we have our number nine video card. Interestingly enough, it is equipped with a VGA pass-through connector at the top. Right then in the center is our S3 Vision 968 GPU. To the left of that is what I think is a video accelerator, but apparently it was so slow um, that people coined it as the IBM Video Decelerator. And this model is equipped with four megabytes of VRAM, and this is the PCI variant. All the way at the bottom, you can see our modem, and to the left of that is the Ethernet card. Not gonna say too much about those two, I'll just give you guys a couple seconds to take a good look at them, and then we will move on to the RAM. Right next to our Sound Blaster AWE32, you can see four sticks of 72-pin EDO RAM. I believe it looks like it's either tin-plated or platinum-plated. Now, it looks like the system is equipped with two different sets. One is using Panasonic memory, that's the set at the top, and the one below that is using memory from Micron Technologies. Now I had some suspicions that this processor might have just been the Pentium 100 overclocked to 133 megahertz, but after removing the heatsink and checking out the serial number, it appears that this is the Intel Pentium running at 133 megahertz. So I think uh, the processor was upgraded at some point. I removed the heatsink and on the heatsink they're using some sort of uh, thermal pad. It doesn't look too effective for uh, thermal 
transfer between the CPU and heatsink. Uh, starting to rip apart here, so I might peel that off and put some legitimate thermal compound on it. And finally, you can get a nearly unobstructed view of the motherboard. You can see our four PCI slots, four ISA slots, all of the RAM slots are Corsair 256 kilobyte cache module, which I could not remove and the CPU socket, which is socket 5. Alright, so there's one more thing I want to address before we go crazy and try to boot this thing off a USB flash drive using Plop and this USB card I have right here. I specifically told not to use a card with a VIA chipset, but we are going to do that anyway and see if it works because I don't have anything else laying around the back. Let's take a look at cooling though before we do any of that. So it has two intake fans on the front right here. They are blowing air over the CPU heatsink and into the case as well. I mean, I doubt this thing gets too hot. Um, so cooling is probably not too big of a deal, but I still kind of want to address it and take a look at what exactly is going on in this system regarding that. And then the only air outtake we really have is the fan on the back of the power supply. And those are the only fans on the system. For some reason, the brackets that this PC uses for the adding cards are just a bit small. That or the VIA bracket is a bit big. Either way, I had to remove the bracket to get that USB card into the system because it would not fit in. As you can see, I actually bent it up a little bit right there trying to get it into the system because I couldn't figure out what was going wrong. And then I finally uh, realized that the bracket was too big and now we are ready to go. So I'm gonna put everything back together, throw plop in and cross my fingers. I was messing around with DSL and Puppy Linux all last night and I have some good news and I have some bad news unfortunately. The good news is that it appears that the system is capable of booting off a USB flash drive using Plop even with that VIA card. Not sure if that's causing any problems because once again uh, I don't have a different card to see if the VIA card is actually interfering with the boot process but so far it seems like it's uh, doing alright there. The bad news is that XORIC and XVESA don't really get along with this number 9 video card. I did try to swap the number 9 out with a Radeon 7000, uh, but the system would not even post with this card installed, unfortunately. So I had to pull the card out and put the number 9 video card in there. I don't have any other PCI cards, unfortunately, so we're just going to have to deal with that number 9 for now. Now, with Puppy Linux, I am kind of able to get into the desktop. Uh, it freezes at one point when it's uh, loading uh, the background and some of the icons, and I let it set for three hours and nothing actually happened. So I will show you that. And with DSL, I believe it's version 4.1.4. Four maybe that might be right. I'll throw up an annotation if that's wrong. Uh, but with that version, I'm actually getting a kernel panic with the system, so I am trying to uh, downgrade right now and download an older version. But let's go ahead and boot up into Puppy Linux. I'll show you guys how far I can actually get. I have a clock right here if you guys want to keep track of the time. I'm not going to do it personally just because it takes so long. Uh, I have the USB flash drive in the back of the system right now. It's a 32 gigabyte SanDisk Cruiser Glide in the back of that uh, via USB 2.0 card. That's plugged in and ready to go. I have plop in the uh, floppy drive. And let's go ahead and turn the system on and see how long it takes to get, well, to the point where it kind of just freezes. Now, I don't think the CD-ROM drive is working in this system. Uh, I tried to boot off the CD-ROM drive using plop and I had no luck there. It's one of those CD-ROM drives that has the built-in workout function, as you will see. So, uh, you know, or I guess you could call it the anger management function too. Uh, if you get angry, just give it a little tap and it'll come right out. And I did try to boot Worry Puppy off a uh, CD-ROM right there. See, I'll get weird errors like this sometimes uh, when I boot up the system through the flash drive. And I'm not sure if the VIA card is causing that. If I, re if I reboot, the uh, error will probably disappear. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the system off and turn it back on. So 
So this is where it freezes. As you can see, we got partially through loading the desktop, but it is completely frozen now and I'm not going to be able to do anything. And as I said before, I did let this sit here for three hours and it was in the same state when I got back. So yeah, don't think we're going to be able to get into the uh, Mori Puppy GUI, unfortunately. Uh, of course, I could just boot this up into a text mode, but I really want to run a uh, graphical interface on this. I think that's a lot more fun. So I'm going to play around with DSL for a little bit because that's my next option. I'm downgrading right now, downloading some older versions, and we're going to see if we can't get those to work. Alright guys, so I'm really frustrated at this point. I think I'm going to call it for this part of the video because it has just taken way too much time uh, up to this point. I had no success with DSL or Puppy Linux even with the older versions of DSL like 1.4 and 2.4. Uh, could not get those to boot up. This is 2.4 right here and I have no idea what is going on. Once again, it might be because of that uh, via USB card. Not really sure because I don't have any others laying around. But definitely going to have to call it because I'm getting really frustrated and I no longer have the patience to deal with this anymore. Uh, so I'm sorry, I'm going to try to put a little disclaimer in the title so it's not super deceiving. I don't want to have anyone think that this was completely successful. It was somewhat successful. We did prove that it is possible to boot up a USB flash drive on this machine using Plop. Uh, but wasn't 100% there because we were never able to get into the live environments of any of the operating systems. At least the GUI at least. So in the next part, I will try to get uh, some version of Windows up and running on this machine. I think Windows 2000 is probably the most promising at this point. I might also try to get a live Linux distro up and running again if I have time. There's a lighter uh, Linux distribution out there than these two. I think it's called like Floppy Drive Linux or something like that. Someone posted it in a comment a really long time ago. And if you know what I'm talking about, please post it in the comment section because I cannot Remember the name to save my life. It's probably going to be a little while uh, before part two of this video. You know, we need some time apart. I'm really frustrated at this point. So that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Uh, sorry that this didn't work out once again. I know I'm probably going to get a couple angry comments about that. And uh, if you have any tips for me, you know, try to be constructive. I would appreciate it. Sometimes people freak out and uh, absolutely go crazy with their comments. Don't do that because that's... I don't know, it just makes you look bad. If you like this video, don't forget to drop a like. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why besides the fact that it wasn't successful. Yes, I know. Yes, it is staring me in the face. Yes, I am really annoyed. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to support me, you can use my eBay or... No, that didn't, that didn't work out. That didn't come out right. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links. There we go. My Patreon will also be in the description as well. And don't forget to check out the Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology where we will hopefully... Well, actually, that's going to be part two. The next installment is going to be like a review or something. But in part two, hopefully, we will be able to get an operating system up and running on this machine.